Hi everybody, Dan Oman, Mike here, the DRF race of the day for Friday, October the 20th, race number six at Belmont at the Big A graded stakes action. This the grade three Knickerbocker. We're going a mile and an eighth on the turf. Let's take a look at this field. $150,000, the purse for the Knickerbocker and Mike. On the far outside is Pioneering Spirit, and he is back again. He won the Bernard Baruch two starts back. They wheeled him back in the Joe Hurst Turf Classic, and that was a weird race to begin with. It was contested over a yielding turf course at a mile and a half. So plenty of excuses for Pioneering Spirit if you want to give it to him. Yeah, I don't think that's the race you necessarily want to hold against this horse, Dan. He, he, it was always going to be hard for him to be competitive with that kind of a field. I um, mean, he just really couldn't do it throw in the yielding turf course, all that stuff. It's easy enough to give him a pass for it. Everything he did on turf for Linda Rice prior to that makes him a huge player in this race. Here's the key to the race, and that is the time form U.S. pace projector. Note the gray bar. There is no speed in this race, according to time form U.S., although it is worth noting, Mike, that the number two King Cause was on the lead in this race last year, and guess what? He took him wire to window. I wonder if Kendra Carmouche has similar thoughts this year. I think they do. I, I'll disagree with this pace projector and, and just suggest that the two is probably making the lead in this race ahead of the four. Um, and then we'll see if uh, King Cause can, you know, run another one of his good races. He's good enough to beat this field. He won this race last year, as you mentioned, Dan. He did it on a super slow pace, and he might have a similar situation in front of him here. The number one, Wicked Finn, at least seems pace adaptable. When these splits are fast, he'll fall behind. When they're slower, he can stay close. He's been a great claim. They took the source for $10,000 last year, and he earned a stakes placing last time out in the Red Bank when behind St. Anthony, a race again. Big pace in front. He fell behind. He rallied for second. St. Anthony had a very good trip, but he was also tracking that fast pace. Yeah, and St. Anthony was also a clear-cut winner in that race. I mean, Red Bank, uh, uh, Wicked Finn ran fine in there. Dan, coming from us, I thought he finished up well, uh, but he was never a real threat to win it. Um, overall, since they've come back to turf with them earlier this year, he's run really well in those races. In the exact all five times, this is a tougher race. King Cause, again, wired this race last year. Carmosh is very aggressive, crafty jockey that probably will take advantage of the fact that there's no speed in this race. Now, we want to stake at a mile and an eighth. One of his best surfaces, three uh, uh, best distances, three starts back at Lone Star. What did you make of the last two races? Easy to throw out the Kentucky Downs race, I guess, last time out. The Ellis Park race, a little bit tougher for me to, to kind of forgive. I agree. It didn't run well in there. It was a mile and a quarter. That's probably not beyond his best distance, Dan. Um, and it was a fast pace that he was trying to keep up with but he still didn't run well in that spot when he won the race three back going this distance at lone star i mean he ran fine in there but that did not seem like a good field to me uh but he just came wide and got the job done listen I i'm a fan of his i think on his best day he could win here um we'll see what kind of price he is i sort of preferred other horses but i wouldn't be shocked if he was around at the end Number three, Commandeer's career has been plagued by layoff lines. He's a five-year-old. He's run 17 times, but a lot of layoffs. He finally, it looked like, was going to get back to the winner's circle at Colonial two starts back. Pretty decent trip, saved ground early, but he had a lot to do in the final 16th of a mile, and he was able to finally run down the leader late, DQ'd from that race due to a medication violation. He showed up last time, Mike, with a bar shoe at Delaware going a mile and a half. He loomed and he flattened in the manner of a horse that didn't want to go that far. Yeah, that's how I looked at it, too. I, guess, I don't care as much about that race. I still find him, you know, pretty hard to judge in this field just based on what he's done in the limited turf start so far. And he's got the, you know, the big figure first time on turf at Keeneland uh, back in April. And I thought he ran fine in that race. I didn't think it was, you know, a super strong performance. It didn't make me feel like we're going to start seeing him win graded stakes races anytime soon, but he ran pretty well there. Here's St. Anthony's most recent start in the Red Bank for the legendary trainer, Neil Drysdale. Just a beautiful ride from Paco Lopez, who got this horse over into the pocket after breaking from the far outside. He saved ground all the way around, got the split at just the right time. And St. Anthony really fires in the stretch after being up close to those solid splits. 93 buyer for a horse that looks like he's going the right way. Now he's got to stretch it out to a mile and an eighth. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not worried about the mile and an eighth for him. Um, and I do think there's a good trip coming for this horse because he's uh, very tactical and he doesn't need the lead to be effective. His last two wins, including that one we just watched, I mean, he's looked good to me winning both times. I just feel like it had a, a lot of it had to do with the fields that he was in. That allowance for him that he won two starts back, that field was terrible. And the horse that ran second to him is a good horse, but he's a dirt horse. 
and there was really nothing else in there, and he got the perfect trip and won last time. I think he's moving way up in class, Dan, but I do think he fits pretty well here. Grade one winning millionaire, number five, Rock Emperor is up next. And while Rock Emperor has done some nice things in his career, he's also been at times a very frustrating horse to follow. Case in point, his most recent start, the grade three Singspiel, where he's favored and turning into the stretch, it looks like it's how far he's going to win. He's got all the momentum on the outside and he just hangs. It's not a great loss here uh, for this horse. I mean, the horse that, that does wind up beating him did get to save a little more ground and got the split, and that horse is in good form right now. But come on, Rock Emperor, you gotta you gotta get the job done here as the favorite. He can't do it. Um, you know that his good race makes him really, really tough in here, Dan. He is a Grade One winner for Chad Brown, even though mostly he's been disappointing since he's gotten over here, but he's got races that would make him really tough in here. As does the number six masterpiece. The source is a graded stakes winner, and they ran him in the Arlington Million last time out. And for a horse that usually likes to come from behind, I was very surprised he was up close to that really solid pace. And I think that just took the starch out of him more than anything else. I'm expecting them to take back and make one run. The problem is that might not work considering the pace scenario. Yeah, that, that, that's a real conundrum for this horse. Because you're right. I mean, it was strange to see him chasing the pace last time. If you're looking for an excuse for the Arlington Million, I guess that is one. Two starts back when they went shorter over yielding ground. He might be in that kind of situation here, Dan. That was a super slow pace. He was last. He really ran at the end of that race, but he just really had no chance. Um, and I thought he finished really well to be second. He's in, To me, he's interested in here because they're going to finally go shorter with him again, or at least a little shorter, a middle distance, because since they gotten him over here, they've really concentrated on long distance races for him. 14 turf starts, 10 of them a mile and a quarter or longer, Dan. To me, his best races since he's gotten here, they're nine furlongs. This is the distance that he wants to go. If he gets the right trip in here, I think he's going to be pretty tough. Both of his wins in the States have come at nine furlongs. Toner has commandeer. He also has the seven, Siege of Boston. This is a very progressive four-year-old Colt. It's possible we haven't seen his best race. He's coming out of a good effort and a half-million-dollar handicap at Kentucky Downs going a mile. He finished ahead of uh, a horse that would come back to win a third-level allowance at Churchill with a 95 buyer speed figure. He ran just fine in this race. Again, he does seem to be improving, and he has at least shown speed in paceless races in the past yeah he got wired in this race but he still ran pretty well i like his one i like he was getting good last year as a three-year-old for toner and he finally broke his maiden at the end of the year he's been better with every start this year as well i think he's you know a very strong contender in this race day but he's the morning line favorite in this race and i don't know if i'd bet him as the morning line favorite the pioneering spirit has had a very nice campaign since being switched to turf by linda rice he won four in a row uh no disgrace in losing in the sword dancer when running third behind bolshoi ballet going a mile and a half my problem was that big number that stands out the bernard baruch he couldn't have asked for a better trip that day just was able to save ground in behind the lead got out and was too good for that field again we talked about how the joe hirsch is a, a toss out but I'm just not sure he's as good as it looks on the Bernard Baruch. I think that trip dresses him up a little bit. Yeah, all right. That's fair enough. Isn't that a good thing for him, though, that you know that he can get that kind of a trip? Because that might be really important in this race, Dan. Um, that, uh, if you go back to that time from U.S. Pace, because they have him last early. He does not have to be last early in this race. He's very adaptable as far as running style goes. He's very adaptable as far as distance goes since, since Rice took over and switched him to turf. Mile, mile and a sixteenth, mile and an eighth, mile and a quarter, mile and three eighths wins at all those distances, so that doesn't matter. He can get the right trip in this race. If you can get past his turf classic, I can easily get past his turf classic. I think he's a super strong contender in this race. And 7-2, to two, a very fair price on the morning line. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel, Breeders' Cup, right around the corner. Top pick time for Friday's race of the day. It's the Knickerbocker. You're going with Masterpiece. He's getting back to his best distance. He just has to overcome a questionable pace scenario. All about the trip uh, that he can work out here, Dan. Maybe he just needs a little something to run at here and to be within range at the top of the stretch. I think he's, you know, maybe one of the best horses in this field. If he gets the right trip, I like him in here. The two outside horses were the others for me. Commandeer's cutting back to a distance hit he likes as well. Barshu off for him. I think he has a little bit more tactical speed than your pick. He's got to be a price, I would think, going into the gate. Six, seven, eight, five for Mike. Three, four, seven, one for me. Friday's race of the day, the Nickabaka. Good luck.